Brett Kavanaugh being praised tonight by an unexpected source, fellow Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She gave the junior justice credit for keeping a promise from his contentious confirmation hearings, bringing on an all-female group of law clerks. But not everyone agrees he should be getting a pat on the back. Let's discuss with Think Progress columnist Ian Milheiser and Chief Counsel for the Judicial Crisis Network, Carrie Severino. Good to see you guys. Good to be here. Thanks for coming in. Okay, so let me read what Justice Ginsburg said. She says, Justice Kavanaugh made history by bringing on board an all-female law clerk crew. Thanks to his selections, the court has this term for the first time ever, more women than men serving as law clerks. So, Ian, she's giving him credit for that, keeping yeah. that promise. I mean, he deserves a little bit of credit for it. I, I think that it's nice when you can find a few graduates of ultra-elite law schools who have clerked for ultra-elite judges. Like and, most of the clerks. But like all of the clerks, um, <laughs> almost all the clerks. So I think it's nice that he did this. I also think that we remember Supreme Court justices not for their clerks, mm -hmm. and so I'm less interested in who he's hiring, and I'm more interested in whether he's going to apply the law fairly mm -hmm. to everyone. Which I think we all agree, that should be the way that you're going to assess a justice. Um, it, Catherine Rubino in AboveTheLaw.com writes this, uh, and, and the headline is, I don't give a flying fig how many women law clerks Brett Kavanaugh hires. Spare me the accolades over Brett Kavanaugh's hiring practices. She goes on to write, it doesn't matter how many women he surrounds himself with. It can't make me forget the testimony of Dr. Christine Blase Ford. I don't know if his clerks don't believe Dr. Ford or merely don't care, but neither makes me happy to have these women close to the levers of power. Gary. Well, I think there were a lot of women who thought there were, there were a lot of things that didn't add up about uh, Christine Blasey Ford's story. And obviously, these clerks, some of them, there were some of his many women clerks who were the ones out there supporting him during the confirmation process as well. So uh, this is something, this is, you know, his, his record as a appellate judge and his lifelong support of women in law is one of the things that we've seen. It's kind of when you've got someone who's been a decade on the bench there aren't really a lot of surprises. They go on to the Supreme Court and is, is doing some of those same things that we saw from his, his uh, long tenure on the D.C. Circuit. So he's following the law, and he's also one of the uh, leaders in supporting women from the bench. Mm -hmm. That's why you have people like Lisa Blatt, the, one of the mm -hmm. most, uh, most prolific arguers, women argues before the court, which Justice Ginsburg also said we don't have enough of. She, she's very liberal. She said, I think he's someone we can trust to apply the law fairly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that's what we've been seeing so far. I'm looking forward to the rest of his decision. Well, and you know, Ian, there have been a couple of things that he's done that conservatives have not been thrilled about. Some conservatives are like, wait a minute, what, how can we count on him on this or that or the other? I mean, he has definitely shown an independent streak on a couple of important cases. He, he showed an independent streak, I think, on a couple of small cases. And that's because most of what we've got in this term have been small cases. You know, that we're waiting a lot of the big cases. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I like to judge people by their record. I, I think that Brett Kavanaugh does not have much of a record on the Supreme Court. And so have me back in a month and I'll tell you more about what I think <laughs> about him. That's true. Yeah. I mean, the end of June, um, folks, just as a reminder, obviously that's when we get all of the big remaining cases. And we were just talking during the commercial about the ones that we still have to get. Um, and Carrie, I have to ask you, because you ju clerked for Justice Thomas, I believe correctly. Uh, uh, and he, um, he's gotten some interesting raising eyebrows over a couple of decisions where he has sided with the more liberal wing of the court as well. Yeah, I mean, this happens more than people realize. There's, we had a case that Justice Ginsburg sided with some of the mm -hmm. conservatives recently. So it, there are, uh, in, on big cases, often it does split along predictable lines, but then in many cases it doesn't. You know, it's, it's, it can be really hard to predict. But what we have seen is so far on the bench, Kavanaugh has been a, what we expected. He's, again, he's got this long track record. That was one of the things that was so great about President Trump's list. You had people, you could assess their records, you could look at what they were doing. I thought it was really interesting that now it sounds like the reporting liberals are starting to come up with lists in yes. the hopes of having someone to come up, except for they aren't publishing theirs. So Ian, I don't know if you'd call on them to say, let's, let's be trans as transparent as President Trump was, and let's not have a secret Supreme Court list. I think every, the Americans should know what kind of judges these are, unless you think they're maybe too extreme for the American well, people to, uh, to handle. I don't know. And it helps us do our job, because when the list is out there as reporters, we can go dig around on these people's uh, um, you know, qualifications yeah. and their record as well. But you know, do you think it goes public at all, this talk of this list? I, I, I think, well, if we talk about a list of potential Supreme Court nominees, I think most people already know who's on the list who, like, 
are the sort of people who are in the know. Like, ask any kid on the Harvard Law Review who, <laughs> like, they think are the justices that are the, the judges who are likely to become justices, they can tell you. So, like, it's one of those things where, you know, it would be nice if they make it, it would make my life easier as yeah, a journalist, but, like, it's not actually that much of a secret. Well, I'll see both of you out there over the next couple of weeks as we do get these big decisions and know more about how these newer justices are going to perform on some of these big cases. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, take